Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by Bellator Flyweight Rebecca Ruth. Rebecca, how are you? I'm great. Rebecca, back on February 26th, you picked up a win at Bellator 150. You won the fight by unanimous decision. How pleased were you with your performance in the fight? I was, I was extremely pleased with that performance. Um, it, was, it was one of those fights that kind of went to plan. Everything that we worked on in the training camp, you know, leading up to it, it all worked out. So it was definitely a good win. Just curious, what exactly was the game plan going into the fight? Um, you know, we'd watched a lot of game film on her and, and you know, seen some of the habits that she had. And, and she was a very strong opponent. She had great stand-up and, and, you know, a strong ground game as well. So, um, you know, our game plan was to go in and, and kind of throw some things at her that maybe she hadn't seen before. A lot of head control on the cage. Um you know, not really, not really sinking some hooks in on the ground, but um, you know, doing just uh, you know a lot of uh, kind of more or less wrestling uh, type strategies with her, and uh, it all worked out. Going into the fight, when you were breaking down Lena and watching her on film with your coaches, did anything surprise you in this fight? Did she do anything in the fight that you never saw her do on film? And on the flip side of that, were there things that you were prepared for her doing in the fight that just never happened? Did anything surprise you about this fight? Um, you know, she had a couple of, of good straight uh, left left hands. A lot of times they, you know, from what we've seen in the past, they were more of a, a hook. But um, no, she she definitely had some strong some strong punches. Um, but no, I mean, pretty much everything that we we expected happened i personally scored the fight 30 to 27 one judge had it the same way 30 to 27 and then the other two judges had it 29 to 28 all for you obviously that's how you got to the unanimous decision how did you score the fight um you know i'll be honest with you as far as the scoring i i don't usually i don't even know Sometimes, I don't know. To me, it's just kind of confusing sometimes on how they how they score it, how they judge it. Um, of course, you know, a lot of my the few people on my side and in my corner and stuff kind of seen it the same way you did. But there again, that's why I I don't really like leaving it up to the judges. I like to try to to take care of it, you know, during the fight on my own, so that there's no no question about it. But um, you know, the judges have their own their own way of, of scoring, so. I guess until I can really break that down and figure out how it is, you know, they it, when you let it go to the judges, that's that's what you have to deal with sometimes. Have you watched the fight? And if so, how many times have you watched it? Um, I've watched it. I've watched it once on the Bellator website, and then my brother actually had recorded it, so I get to come back and watch it on Sunday. Um, you know, and then a few times here and there, just catching bits and pieces of it but um yeah i've watched it a few times back it's, it was actually one of those fights where you, you don't mind going back and watching it because everything kind of happened the way you wanted it to when you go back and watch the fight can you watch it as a fan can you go back and watch the fight for just the sake of enjoying a fight can you go back and get out of fighter mode and just kick back and relax and watch the fight? Or are you still in fighter mode where you're still breaking yourself down and you're still looking at it like, okay, well, I could have done this better, I could have done that better. If I would have seen that opening in the moment, maybe I would have got a stoppage. Can you get out of fighter mode when you're watching a fight? Can you you not break down yourself when you're watching a fight? Can you not be looking for possible improvements to make in the future when you're watching a fight like this? Or can you get out of fighter mode and watch it as a fan? When you watch a fight like this, are you able to unwind and just relax and watch it as a fan? No, I'm still definitely looking at it as a fighter mode. Like like you said, um, you know, when you when you watch it back, you're kind of looking at it going, man, if I had a I could, you know, I, I see myself doing this. I've got to keep my right hand up. I've got to, you know, cut this angle a little better. You know, so yeah, I definitely, every time I watch it, I'm I'm kind of looking to see what I can do to, to make it better. 
I had a coach tell me once that when you watch yourself fight on film, you have to understand two things. The first thing is, it's never as bad as you thought, and the second thing is it's never as good as you thought. Meaning, let's say you get knocked out. In the moment, you probably think that it's the worst thing that's ever happened to you, and you got absolutely destroyed, and and very bad things happened. But then when you go back and you watch it on film, you realize that you just got caught, or you did something minor, a bad mistake, or when you actually got knocked out, it wasn't some big fall where you your head bounced off the canvas like a basketball. So it's never as bad as you thought when you lost. And then on the flip side of that, when you win a fight, it's never as good as you thought. Maybe in the moment you got a knockout or a submission or something, and you're like, oh my God, this is great. I can't wait to watch this. I did this, I did that. But then when you go back and you watch it on film, you realize that what you thought in the moment and what you thought you did right when it happened it didn't happen that way. It didn't exactly happen how you remembered it. So when you watch this fight, was it what you remembered it being like in the moment right after the fight had ended? Did everything that you thought happened in the fight happen when you went back and watched it on film? Or was your performance in the fight not as good as you thought it was in the moment? Um, it was it was good, but... I, every time I, you know, when I watch it back, I see things where I'm like, oh, I, I forgot, you know, I forgot that that happened, um, or, or, you know, oh, I see now that I shouldn't have done this and, and should have done that. So, yeah, your your coach was is 100% right, I, at least in my eyes, because um, I do that too. When I'll, I'll think, oh, that was a terrible fight, win or lose, you know, that wasn't my best performance, that wasn't. And then I'll go back and watch it and be like, oh, you know, well, I did this okay, or I did that all right. Or if you have a great win, you always go back and you're like, oh, well, I could have, I could have done this differently. So, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. How did it feel fighting in Bellator? Obviously, this was your debut, and Bellator is a massive show. They're, without a doubt, the number two promotion for mixed martial arts in the world, and They're on Spike TV. You fought on TV before, but Spike TV is still that destination for a lot of mixed martial arts fans because obviously the UFC was on there for a long time, and now Bellator has been on there for a while now. So it's definitely a destination, and there's a lot of eyeballs that are on you that haven't been on you before when you're fighting on regional shows. So it's a big deal fighting for Bellator. What was the experience like? This was your first time going through the whole process of fight week and and fighting for those guys. So what was it like fighting for Bellator? How was the experience? It was was great. Um, All of the Bellator uh, employees, the guys that that you were working with, they were wonderful backstage all the way through the entire thing. Um, it, It was definitely a great experience. Once, you know, with the lights and the the cameras and the pictures and the interviews and stuff like that leading up before the fight, you know, it's nice, but at that time you're, you know, my, your your total focus on is on why you're there. Um, you know, and that's obviously for the fight and what you have to do. And then, and then afterwards, you know, everybody was, was just very professional and, uh, no, it was definitely a great experience, and I've, I've run into people now that were like, hey, you know, I, I watched that fight, and, and people that, you know, you, you don't realize how many people are watching. Mm-hmm. It was definitely an awesome experience. A lot of people thought going into the fight that you would lose. I kept hearing nothing about you, but I kept hearing everything about your opponent. It, it kind of seemed like, you know, you, you weren't even going to be there on Friday night. It kind of seemed <laughs> like she was just going to fight herself. You know, it was it was a very weird situation because I kept hearing about your opponent and, and what she was going to do and what was next for her, and I never really heard much about you. So what did you know about yourself that the quote-unquote experts, yeah, I'm doing air quotes, experts of mixed martial arts didn't know? Um, you know, I, it was definitely, that it was kind of a good thing for me. It, it took off a lot of the pressure going into the fight. Um, but what a lot of people don't know about me is that, you know, I have the heart. I, I, I want to do it. You know, I may not be 
the youngest of all the opponents or of all the Bellator girls or of any fighter, really. Um, but, you know, I, I have the heart. I, I want this. This is this is something I've been working on for years, uh, years upon years. And, you know, this just happens to be my time now. And regardless of age, you know, you when you, you take somebody that, that wants it as bad as I do and has the heart enough to do what I do to get there, then, you know, you can't, you can't really count those people out, but those people may not get a lot of the, uh, you know, the airtime or the, you know, the publicity, which in my eyes is great. I'm, I'm fine with that. Now that you fought her and you got the win and everything went well, where does Lena rank based on competition of the fighters that you fought in the past? Um, you know, I've, I've fought I've fought some pretty tough girls. Um she definitely she definitely was, was quick. She had uh you know, she had some good punches, she had some good I fought I fought girls um that maybe, you know, had better stand up, but Lena all around definitely she's definitely one of my, my toughest opponents. Um, you know, she she was a force that you had to you had to watch what you did. You couldn't, you know, there were some things that I, I had to hold off on because she would definitely be able to capitalize on those. A lot of kicks, things like that. I didn't get to throw as many because she's, she's definitely at the level that she's at for a reason. Is this the biggest win of your mixed martial arts career? Or is the fight before this, the one that got you into Bellator, still the fight you consider to be the biggest win of your career? Is this fight that just happened back on February 26th, is this the biggest win of your mixed martial arts career? Um, I would have to say yes. Um, you know, my, my last win before this one is when I got the, the belt for Shamrock mm-hmm. and the contract for Bellator. So, you know, that was, that was pretty, that was pretty big for me as well. But this being the first one on the main stage, definitely being an underdog for the fight and, um, yeah, I would, I would have to say this is probably one of the biggest ones of my career. How did you celebrate the win? Uh, you know, I had... Kansas was, is about seven, six and a half, seven hours away from, you know, my hometown and, and where a lot of my fans... So I, I had a few fans that were able to drive up there and, and, and people that I work out with at the gym and family and things like that. So honestly, after the fight... Um, you know, we all went back to the hotel rooms that we had, and we were able to. to ha- I was able to hang out with with the people that had sacrificed quite a bit to come up and and watch the fights and be there with me and and take that moment in. So we ordered pizza. I got to eat pizza, <laughs> so I was pretty excited. Rebecca, we'll end on this. It's a little segment I like to call Really Random. That's where I ask you a random question and you give me the real answer. Some of these questions are custom made just for you and some of these questions are generic ones that I ask all the people I interview. So here's the first question. Superpower you'd love to have? Uh, is never being exhausted a superpower? Okay. <laughs> Nonstop energy? Okay. I'll accept that. I'll accept okay. that. Okay. <laughs> Favorite movie? Oh, going back to my uh, younger days, it would probably be Dirty Dancing. Movie you've seen the most times? That would probably be it, Dirty Dancing. Favorite color? Pink. Favorite guilty pleasure? Chocolate. Go to song when you're singing in the shower? <laughs> Um, Baby's Got Her Blue Jeans On by Mel McDaniel. Celebrity people say you look like? Cameron Diaz. You won the Shamrock FC belt in the fight previous to the one that happened at Bellator 150, like you mentioned earlier. Just curious, did you get to keep that belt when you left to go to Bellator? I did. Yeah, I did. I still have it. It's at my gym. Your nickname, Ruthless. Who started calling you that, and is it only your nickname because your last name is Ruth? Uh, my middle name, actually, is Ruth. Oh. And um, coming up, my, my mom came up with that, Ruthless Rebecca Ruth. That I have to give that to my mom. What's your last name? Uh, it's, my maiden name is Wilson. My married name is Gullet, but should be going back to Wilson soon. Why did you decide to have Ruth be your stage name? Um, because I, 
I think, you know, that would be if, first of all, it works with Ruthless. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if, if I get married later on down the line, do something where my last name may change, go back to my maiden name, take a, you know, a married name, then I don't ever have to worry about it. Ruth is never going to change. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. So you're going through a divorce right now? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I try to keep that, uh, you know, that's just more personal and uh, try to keep that out of out of everything. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Thank you. You're 6 and 1 as a pro mixed martial artist. The only loss, the one in your record is a loss to former RFA champion and current UFC strawweight Jocelyn Jones Liebarger. You lost the fight by split decision back at RFA 19 on October 10th, 2014. So my two questions about that fight are, first part, did you think you had done enough to win that fight? And second part of the question, what went wrong for you in that fight? That fight, uh, that fight was at 115. Mm -hmm. Um, Weight cut went great. I felt great going into the fight. Um, you know, she, Jocelyn, again, uh, was a strong opponent. She she threw some things at me that I wasn't expecting. Um, you know, that was, I think I beat myself up mentally in that fight because I did get frustrated. Um, so, yeah, I, I think with that one, I, you know, it was a split decision. You, you know, you hear from some people that I shouldn't have lost. You hear from some people that, you know, it was a good possibility. So that one was a tough one. Um, I just didn't I didn't follow game plan like I should have, like I wanted to. I think I got uh, frustrated with myself in that fight. This fight that you just had was the first fight in your mixed martial arts career that you went through a full training camp as a full-time fighter. You no longer work a second job. You're just 100% focused on fighting two-part question first part what was it like going through this training camp as a full-time fighter and second part of the question how have you been able to pursue this career full-time now is it because bellator is just paying you better than any of the shows that you fought for in the past and and because you're making a lot more money you've been able to quit your second job and just focus on fighting or is it a situation where yeah you should probably still be working a second job but because you're fighting in a big show you kind of have to do this full time if you want to be competitive in this division because there's a lot of girls out there that are full time fighters and to stay up with the competition you have to be doing what they're doing so is it more of a situation where Bellator is just paying you better, and they've been able to allow you to go and do this full time. Or is it because you just have to? Because you you got to stay competitive, and the only way to stay competitive is if you're doing this full time. How have you been able to quit your second job and do this full time? Um, yeah, this this is the first time I've been able to to do this full time, and it's been amazing. I feel a lot stronger. Um, I've been able to do so many more, you know, being able to spread my workouts out throughout the day instead of trying to cram it in into a few hours after work at night has been uh, has been huge for me. Um, I've been able to, to do this, yes, because Bellator is at a different level now. You know, I feel like in order to compete with, at the level that these other girls are, are going to be competing at and, and the, you know, the talent level at this you know, at, at now in the game, I this is something I have to do. I have to be able to train and, and not uh, worry about everything else. And I'm able to do that now, yes, because Bellator is paying out more than, than where I was, you know, than, than the other places I was fighting at before. So they've definitely made this possible for me. Who's your manager? Because I saw some pretty big sponsors on your shorts at the fight. So who's your manager? He's doing a great job, whoever he is. Yeah, yeah, I had uh, Benny Boyles. He's my my manager, my trainer. He uh, he definitely is. He's got well, his son too 
is uh, Justin Lawrence that fights for Bellator mm. as well. So he's he's been around it for a while, and he you know he has connections in in other places, and he's just been phenomenal to me. So yeah, it's it's my my manager trainer Benny Boyle. And you're training out of 21st Century MMA. Is that the only right. gym you train out of, or do you also go to Finney's? I go to I go up to Finney's too. I do uh, I do some cross training up at Finney's MMA as well. My my main gym though is 21st Century. Like I mentioned a little bit earlier, this fight against Lena, a lot of people were counting you out. A lot of people thought that you'd lose this fight. So I'm interested in knowing what's more satisfying for you. Is it proving the doubters wrong or because there are a lot of people who believed in you going into this fight there were a lot of people especially in the midwest especially the people who had seen you fight in shamrock fc there were a lot of people who did believe in you going into this fight so what's more satisfying for you proving the doubters wrong or proving the people who believe in you right Definitely more gratifying to prove the people who believed in me, prove them right. Um, you know, I, I try to be a positive person at all times, and that has helped me get through a lot of situations. And, you know, I could dwell and I could, I could be a person that's going to rub it in the people who didn't believe in me. I could rub it in their face, that kind of thing. But I would just assume focus all my energy on the people that were there, the people that supported me, the people that were there, um, you know, cheering me on and and being positive for me. That I would much rather spend all my energy on them than than the naysayers. You know, there's they're going to be everywhere, mm-hmm. and if I focused on them all the time, then I wouldn't have time to, to even train. So, yeah, those people, you know, not and not that you know, a lot of them just didn't know. Um, you know, they, they didn't know who I was. So, you know, hopefully now maybe they are fans. Maybe they'll be on the on the positive spectrum of things now. What motivates you in life and in fighting? My children. Um, you know, me and me and my kids, we we do everything together. We we have a blast and uh, you know, this now with this being my full time career, I know that I have to do well. I you know, I have I have a family to support and, um, you know, I'm going to be able to give them what they want. They, they're in a ton of sports as well, and that gets very expensive. So I fight to, you know, to, to keep them in sports. No, I mean, that's what it seems like, but I definitely fight for family. Besides fighting, what are you passionate about? Oh, goodness. Um, you know, my kids, it, 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 I know I keep going back to that, but it just seems like that, that's what my life is. You know, my, my boys in baseball and football and basketball my daughter does dance and softball and martial arts and you know we we stay busy that's i have to say that's what i'm passionate about i have an amazing family and we're we're very close so um you know staying active with them these two kids what are their names and how old are they my son is blaine he's 12 and my daughter is danny ray and she's eight they were at the fights, too, then yeah. with my, my parents. I yeah. saw them there. They kept showing them on the TV. Yep, that's, that's my family. Yep. And then I have two brothers, too. They weren't able to make it because they were one was working and the other one was coaching his son's basketball team in the playoffs that weekend. If you could trade places with anyone in the world for a week, who would you trade places with and why? I can't think of anywhere I'd rather be than right here, right now. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with with myself and what's going on in my life right now. So I can't say that I'd trade places with anybody. Hobbies outside of fighting? Oh, uh, well, we play, me and a lot of people at the gym and the kids, we play paintball a lot. We actually just played this this past weekend. So we have a good time playing paintball. And then my son plays baseball. I played softball in college. So I really get into, you know, going to his practices and, when I'm able to, being able to help and get my daughter going in the softball world. So, Do you have any pre-fight rituals or superstitions? I do. I do, actually. Um, my kids, you know, when my daughter was younger, I, I have her. I had her started doing this at some of my fights. I get a little Tupperware container, 
and my kids have to blow kisses into that, and I trap them in there, and then I, you know, I take them with me on the fight, so whenever I, before I go out, I have to, I get their kisses before I go out into the cage. Do you have any post-fight rituals? Oh, usually post-fight, it's just somewhere to eat. Usually we try to get pizza. (laughs) What's on that pizza? Is it the same every time, or is it whatever I can get a hold of? Um, you know, I yeah. At that point, everything tastes great. It, it, anything that has cheese on it probably tastes great. <laughs> <laughs> what do you worry about? What's something that keeps you up at night? Ooh, something that keeps me up at night. Um, probably just making sure that everything is is in order for the next day. Um, you know, hopefully here soon, money won't be. A big portion of that. What would you rather be? Would you rather be the best fighter in the world, or would you rather be the highest paid fighter in the world? What means more to you, glory or wealth? I would say the best, the best fighter in the world. Um, you know, I, I, as you can tell, I don't, I don't get into. I, I go there for a reason. Let's just put it that way. I go there for a reason, and that's to be the best, the best fighter that night. And. Um, That's what I would rather be known for. You got a late start in mixed martial arts. You didn't start fighting professionally until you were already in your mid-30s. So I'm interested in knowing, what were you doing before you started fighting in mixed martial arts? Um, I, well, I didn't start even going to the gym until after I had my my first kid, um, I didn't really know anything about it. I had never, you know, when I, growing up, I played all the sports I could play at my high school, and then I went to college, played softball there, and it wasn't until I started going to the gym, I found that gym there in the, um, the hometown and started working out that I really know anything about fighting. So up until then, I was just, you know, I, I was playing sports, I was staying active, but um, had no idea that this was even out there. What made you try MMA? What was the appeal originally for you? Um, when I first started working out at the gym, it was, um, you know, they, they were having a lot of kickboxing and boxing shows. So I went to a couple of those and uh, seen a couple of girls fighting. And in my head, the competitive nature kind of took over. And I'm like, I think I can do that. I want to try that. So I started out doing kickboxing and did boxing and then realized, you know, after years of doing that, I was like, I, you know, I I really like this. I I enjoy this. I think, you know, maybe at this point I could go pro and, uh, and see how I do. Well, at that point, you know, MMA was starting to, to come around and be more, you know, more of the forefront than kickboxing or boxing. So I, at that point, I just figured I'd better go ahead and get started learning some of the jiu-jitsu and wrestling, and I did and had a few um, amateur fights, and when my trainer decided it was time, he uh, he got me a pro fight. Favorite food? Favorite food. I would have to say, and that's a tough one because I like Subway sandwiches a lot. It's usually anything to do with carbs that I can, when I can consume carbs. So bread would probably be my biggest downfall is bread. Least favorite food? Oh, I would probably like broccoli and cauliflower and stuff like that. Is Subway your favorite restaurant or is there a restaurant you like better? No, I would have to say Subway probably. Favorite band and or solo artist? Oh, wow. Um, that's a tough one because I don't really know music that well. I like country, so um, I don't know. That's a tough one for me because I don't don't really know. You know, I like, i tell you what, I like a lot of Miranda Lambert, so that would probably be, she would probably be one of my solo, one of my favorite solo artists would be Miranda Lambert. As far as a band, one that comes to mind is Charlie Daniels' band. Favorite social media platform? I'm on Facebook more than anything, so I guess I would have to go with Facebook. But I just started with that Instagram. That it seems it's pretty neat, too. But I'd, have, probably, I'd probably have to say probably Facebook. Website you visit most often? Probably SureDog. Piece of technology you can't live without? My phone. 
If you could go on a $1 million shopping spree at any store, what store would you go on that $1 million shopping spree at? $1 million shopping spree. Probably the buckle. What's the best thing that ever happened to you? The birth of my kids. What's the worst thing that ever happened to you? <laughs> oh, I have to be a little dramatic on this one. Can I pass on that one? Okay, okay. Who's your celebrity crush? Oh, definitely um, Channing, Tatum Channing. Yeah. Are, are you a fan of Step Up? Yeah. Magic Mike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your pet peeve? Oh, I have uh, probably two big pet peeves. is when people drag their feet when they walk, and then adults who wear Disney character clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Um, some people are afraid of spiders. Some people are afraid of the dark. Some people are afraid of heights. What are you afraid of? Snakes. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Oh, I hate snakes. I can deal with spiders. I can deal with all the other stuff. Snake, I cannot do. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> time period you'd like to go back and visit, and why? Um, time period. I don't know whether this would be boring or just informational, but going back to when maybe my parents were kids and seeing what it was like for them. So I guess that would be back in the 60s. 70s? So yeah, that's probably be more like the 50s or the 60s. Let's say you found a magic lamp, and you rubbed that magic lamp, and a genie appeared, and the genie said he was going to grant you three wishes. What would those three wishes be? To never have to cut weight again. Just to always be in shape, you know, in fight shape, like ready to weigh in. Mm-hmm. Um, I would wish for, you know, great health for myself and my kids for the rest of our life. And can you ask Jeannie for money, or is that against the rules? No, you can. You can. Can? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would think I would do that, too. Person you look up to the most? Um, My dad. I look up to my dad a lot. He's, a, he's an awesome person, mm-hmm. inside and out. Right now, the Bellator 125-pound division is wide open because it's such a young division and you just had a really big win. I mean, I, it's probably too early to say how everything is going to turn out, but as of right now, are you the top dog in this division because of that win you just had? Yeah, that's hard to say. I haven't uh, I haven't really heard from anybody yet. I know uh, Benny, I think, is talking to them and, you know, I guess orchestrating my next, my next fight. So, you know, I hope so. I hope this puts me in the runnings to be in that title fight at the end of this year to you know and, and become a champion for Bellator. Um, that's definitely my goal. That's that's definitely what I'm hoping for. I would imagine I'll probably have to fight at least at least one more time uh, between now and, and the end of the year. You know, I'm hoping for maybe a couple you know, how, whatever they want to do. Um, but I'm definitely hoping that they're this maybe open their eyes to to me and how bad I want it and how bad I'm I'm wanna be there. So I'm, I'm hoping that they'll see that and uh, put me in the in the runnings for, for a championship title by the end of the year. Because this division is so new and Bellator keeps signing girls left and right, do you even know who's in this division? And of the people that you do know that are fighting at 125 pounds in Bellator... Do you have a good sense of what they bring to the table? Have you watched any film on them? Do you have a good sense of what your competition is in this division? And who do you think potentially could be next for you? I don't know who's going to be next for me. Um, I have looked through the Bellator website, and uh, I haven't got to sit down. I have been super busy. I haven't got to sit down and research all of them yet. Um but from what I've seen just on their website, there's about, I think there's between eight or ten of us. Um, now, with that being said, I don't know if there's more of them that they've signed that just maybe haven't. Because I know I, I signed back in September, but I didn't get on the website until after this last fight or right before it. So, you know, there could be several more out there that I just I haven't heard about yet. When would you like to fight again? 
Um, you know, I would like to. I would like to fight any time. Um, I think there's a show closer to my hometown here in, in Missouri in uh, in June. From what I understand, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. But you know, I would love to fight. I would love to fight in my hometown, you know, around here and, and have a lot of fans there. Best advice you were ever given through life and best advice you were ever given through fighting and who gave it to you? Um, probably for life it would be that, you know, positive positive thoughts bring about positive actions or, you know, it, it just stay on a positive note and good things will happen to you. And that was that was actually by my trainer, Benny as well he's been he's been with me through for quite a few years through a lot of different stages of my life and uh and his advice to me at one point was the positive thoughts bring about positive actions and it's true it definitely rings true um as far as fighting you know there's several different quotes several different things that i've either read somewhere or had people tell me and um one that i like to pass on and this is just a quote that I, i've read somewhere was that uh uh, what the body or what the mind can conceive, the body can achieve. And so when you're broken down and tired, you know, as long as you, you keep your keep your mind right, you can do it. And, uh, and I don't know that anybody really told me that other than reading it somewhere. What's your porn star name? If you combine your childhood pet with the street you grew up on, what would your porn star name be? Oh, okay, my childhood pet. First one that comes to mind is Snowy, and the road I grew up on is Twin Ridge. So, Snowy Ridge? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, Snowy, moving on. <laughs> Number one thing on your bucket list? I want to go skydiving. What's your favorite TV show? It can be a show currently on the air or a show no longer on the air. Just overall, favorite TV show. I have to say I'm a girly girl. It's not really a show, but I still, if I turn the TV on, I usually go to Lifetime first. <laughs> you yeah. like those Lifetime original movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah the Lifetime Movie Network. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a girly side coming out. If you could change one thing about the world, what would you change and why? Oh, I just think the hate. All the hatred people have. Um, so I guess I guess I would kind of go in, in line with you know, I would hope that people would find a, a good religion, and um, I think that would alleviate a lot of a lot of problems that we do have. So, I guess if I could change something, is everybody would would find a a good you know a good religion and and find God, and I think it'd create quite a bit of peace throughout the world. Rebecca, last question: Let's say you are on death row and about to be executed. What would your last meal be? And I need an entree, a dessert, and a beverage. What would your last meal be? My last meal. Pizza, a Coke, and a fresh chocolate chip cookie. Rebecca, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Uh, first of all, with the fans and, and the people that, that are supporting me, I appreciate it. It's been... It's been phenomenal. I've had so much great support and, you know, just, just from everybody. So that part has been has been wonderful. Um, sponsors, uh, I had Venom. Venom, they've been great. Gamma Labs. I had uh, Crossbreed Holsters. You know, of course, my, my gym, my main area is 21st Century Martial Arts. Vinyl Images. NCS, Midwest Diesel, another hometown sponsor, Affliction, and I had um, Finney's, I think. I think that was it. Yeah. Rebecca, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me.